Okay, in this brief video I'd like to um, show you the different firing modes uh, on thyristors. That's uh, burst firing mode and phase firing mode. Um, here we've got a very basic setup with a single phase thyristor feeding a transformer primary on the secondary of the transformer. We have a uh, resistor acting as our load and we're picking up uh, the current through this small current sensor. So at the moment we're in phase control mode um, but we've got zero input on our thyristor. But let's increase that now to 25% and if you observe the oscilloscope uh, you can see that you're getting a uh, basically an attenuated sine wave. So you have here the delay angle and then the conduction angle. Now as I increase my demand to 50% you can see that uh, we go through half a sine wave, we turn on follow the sine wave, then off again, and then again there's a delay and it comes on. We'll now go to 75%, and as you can see there's a very short uh, delay angle, then quite a long conduction angle. It's almost a complete sine wave, but not quite. And 100%, it just looks like normal uh, AC mains. Uh, now to contrast that, we'll bring that back to zero and what we will do is change our thyristor from phase firing mode to burst firing mode. Uh, with this particular thyristor it's microprocessor based and we can quite easily uh, change between the firing modes. You get to the set menu, enter the password, which is 10, and here we have the firing mode, which is set to phase. We've now set it to burst fire, and we can observe the differences. Okay, we've now switched over to burst control mode. We've got zero uh, control input so we can see nothing on the scope. Now we'll turn it on with 25% input. You can see that we're on for four cycles and then 75% of the time we'll be off so it'd be uh, you can see the off time in there. You can increase to 50% and you can see straight away that we're on half the time, off half the time, four cycles on, four cycles off. We'll move to 75% and we're on for 12 cycles and off for four. And finally at 100% we've got basically a pure sine wave as if the SCR doesn't in fact exist, it's just direct mains through to the um, through to the load. So I'll just turn that down a little bit, and you'll observe that on the first burst. In fact, I can stop that. You can see that on the very first burst, there's quite a high current coming through. That's due to transformer inductance and the way that we can largely eliminate that and still burst fire is with uh, delayed triggering. So what we'll do now, we will introduce what's called delayed triggering into our burst firing cycle.
what this means is um, the current will fire at a predefined point after uh, the, the, zero the zero crossing point of the voltage. And what we will observe happening is that that first spike on the burst, that, that current spike will be greatly diminished. So this is the delayed trigger time. Oops. And we'll adjust that to a random figure. This is really determined by the inductance of the transformer. But we'll set it up to about, oh, I think we'll take a guess and say 80. Okay, so we've got that in. We'll set the unit back to standby. We'll put our scope back to trigger. And we'll have a look at the oscilloscope pattern. And we'll see just what we come up with. So let's bring it up to 50% and we can freeze that. We can see just about immediately that that first burst, that first burst train uh, doesn't have that very high current on the first cycle. So this Delayed uh, triggering technique is uh, is very useful. It allows us to burst fire into um, a transformer coupled load uh, without uh, spurious fuse blows, without that high current, and we get all the benefits of burst control, which is. Uh, uh, very low harmonics, uh, low noise.